My name is Oren Etzioni. I'm the WRF Entrepreneurship Professor at the Computer Science Department at the University of Washington, also a venture partner of the Madrona Venture Group and the co-founder of Decide.com. And I'm here today to tell you that you can start uh, a company. Uh, I've done it a few times. Uh, students have done it. Some of the greatest companies out there have been started by students like Facebook by Mark Zuckerberg, Google by Larry and Sergey, but also here at the University of Washington, plenty of students have started companies. Uh, you don't need to have all the answers. What you need to have is the energy and the, the determination to go for it. I don't know how many of you have this question in your head, but it's a very legitimate question. Does entrepreneurship have any place uh, in a university? Really, what, what's going on is that our goal is to have an impact. My goal uh, coming here and over time is really to have an impact. And, and like Lyndon and like uh, many of you, right, I, I could be compensated a lot more if I was in the private sector, whether I was working at uh, Google or whether I was um, as a VC or any of a number of people, right? But I chose to be here because I like the university and I think uh, it is a chance to have an impact. There are lots of ways to have an impact. So a few of my research papers, people have read, and now we have engines like Google Scholar that can uh, tell us not exactly how many people read them, but how many people they've cited them. Uh, often when I see the citation and I read the text of the citation, I can see that they cited it, but they didn't read it. Uh, still, uh, at, least, at, least they, uh, at least they cited it. Uh, I've educated uh, as a professor many, many students over the years. Really one of the high points of my uh, teaching career is I was at Burning Man um, in the middle of the Nevada desert uh, wearing uh, a miniskirt. Um, it's very comfortable in the desert, let me tell you. And um, ran into a couple of, uh, of former students and they're like, I loved your class. That was the best class I took in all the undergrad. And that was just a great moment uh, for me. So I love, I love teaching. Uh, I don't usually wear mini skirts. And, um, but another way to have an impact is to create software that a lot of people use, okay, to, to, to start a company. Actually, it's not just that. You, you, you create software that people use. You create jobs in the region. Okay, companies uh, have, have attracted funding. There's a lot of ways to have an impact, more so than the very narrow, okay, I'm going to write a research paper or I'm going to teach a course. And that's what I've learned over the years here, and I want to share, uh, share with you. Uh, but another reason to, uh, to start companies, and again, you can see I have no hesitation being completely blunt, is you can make a lot of money. Um, that's a great thing. Uh, it's, it aligns your incentives with the investors. Uh, if it's part of all these great things are creating job dynamic. If you're successful, you can make a lot of money. I think that's a good thing. I'm not embarrassed about it. When, when Dan and I first started uh, our, our company, uh, we went and we were talking to VCs and we talked about how we want the company to be a, a, a really good workplace for people and how uh, we wanted to make sure that everybody had a voice in the direction of the company. A lot of values like that that we really cared about. And we could tell as we were talking that the VCs were like, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> and, uh, and Bob Nelson, who uh, uh, Linda mentioned, who kind of was our coach, we pulled him aside and said, why is it that when we talk that way, people look like we're just you know, saying just rude, impolite things? And he said that VCs want to see that you're motivated by making a lot of money. Because <laughs> if you do that, then you'll do that for them, and the company is that much more likely to be a thriving, going concern. So the next VC meeting that we met, uh, the guy said, so um, why are you starting this company? And I looked him in the eye and I said, because I want to make a lot of money. Uh, and, uh, that's the VC that funded the company. <laughs> so uh, live and learn. University people make sense as entrepreneurs. Why don't we let you know, the people who come out of Microsoft or IBM or wherever start, started, or the 15-year-old uh, Seattle boy who uh, sold his company, I forget for how much, but uh, 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 a great success story. And the answer is, if you think about it, researchers, and by that I include both students, staff, and faculty, are entrepreneurs. Think about what we do. Uh, we start from scratch with very limited resources, but we have a vision that we're incredibly excited about. We form uh, small teams, typically uh, students in them, either current or former students. Uh, there's tremendous uncertainty when you start, right? The problem isn't even clear, right? You just have some kind of uh, intuition. Uh, and that can be very vague. A lot of people, when you tell them your idea, 
uh, in the beginning, they're like, that's not going to work. Or that's just like what so-and-so did. It doesn't make sense, right? And you have to have the optimism, the passion, the determination to say, no, no, there's something here, right? The classical entrepreneur is somebody who walks into a, whore, uh, a room, sorry, full of manure, and looks around, and just dives right in, and says, oh, there's got to be a horse here somewhere. Right? That's, that's an entrepreneur. And so um, I actually think that's exactly um, what, uh, what researchers are. Uh, another example of entrepreneurship, you know, at the university, and this is, again, very different from the sociology department, more than 50% of my salary I bring in in grants, contracts, and gifts, right? Um, if my students need to travel somewhere, if they need a machine, I pay for that, right? So really, overall, if you look at the budget that my research group has, more than 90% of that is money that I brought in, right? So that's why I say, I eat what I kill, right? I don't bring in money, I don't eat. Again, that's very much uh, uh, all about entrepreneurship. But it's not at all about me, right? I'm actually, in the scheme of things, uh, a small entrepreneur. Look at the people who founded Google, the people who founded Facebook, the people who founded Yahoo, right? I'm focusing on consumer internet companies. Who were these people? Students at, at the university. What were they doing at the time? They were students. And they had a great idea, and they went after it. Okay? That's, that's the basis of it. And you say, well, okay, uh, you know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg was at Harvard, some folks were at Stanford. Well, uh, Christoph Basilia here, featured on the cover of Newsweek, he's one of the founders of Cloudera, was uh, an undergrad here. Uh, he was in my class, he was not my best student by any means, but uh, very entrepreneurial ones. Uh, Jeremy Jake uh, was a graduate from the master's program here. Uh, he started um, Vizio and uh, Aldous, right, a number of uh, billion dollar plus companies. Um, so uh, it, you don't have to go to Stanford to, to start a great company. Uh, you can be a, a UW student. And just out of computer science, uh, these are the icons, and again, this slide is out of date. We could probably double the number of icons of technologies, either uh, companies that were started or technologies that were generated and licensed to other companies. I don't know if anybody's old enough to remember uh, Metacrawler, uh, Webcrawler. Webcrawler was the first uh, web search engine. So hopefully I've persuaded you it belongs in the university. You're the person who can do it. Just you. Uh, so given that, and given how uh, fun it looks to be right from Lyndon my stories, why doesn't everybody do it? Okay? And first of all, many startups fail. Right? So if you don't like to fail, they're like, hey, I take a course, I know I can get an A. A minus. Okay? If you don't like to fail, not, not a good idea. Okay? Many startups do fail. It's also, it's an emotional roller coaster, okay? You get, if you're at all a real entrepreneur, you get incredibly emotionally involved with your company, okay? The other thing is, you have to be comfortable getting told no a lot. I can't tell you how many times when I've started various companies, uh, and maybe it's just because my ideas are so wacky, people uh, told me, this is not gonna work. But I can assure you, even again, for much more august companies, um, in retrospect, it seems like, oh yeah, you know, Facebook, of course, that's going to be an a incredibly dominant, you know, multi-billion dollar company. Except that at the time, there was MySpace, and everybody knew that with the network effect, uh, already the incumbent is going to win. And furthermore, even, you know, many years later, they were like, well, you know, but they have no business model, right? They're not going to really make money. People are socializing. They're not going to click on ads. So for every company, right, there's a thousand, ten thousand people who said, It'll never, it'll never work. You have to be comfortable hearing that. And, and then, um, okay. What about the hours? You know, uh, not everybody likes to work hard. That's completely legitimate. We're in the Pacific Northwest. You can enjoy life. Uh, I don't work hard all the time. You know, I have kids. I love to spend time with them. But when you're doing a company, it's time to work hard. So if you say, can I do a company in my spare time, right? Sometimes students email me and say, I want to work with you on a research project. I'm taking a lot of classes. I've got a part-time job. I, I have this dog that I walk. So between 3 and 5 on alternate Tuesdays, I can do research with you. And I tell them, thank you very much. That's not going to work for a research project, let alone for a company, OK? You have to be willing to work really, really hard. If not, see you later. Um, so but why do it? It's the ride of your life. You have now a chance, right, before you have a mortgage, before you have kids necessarily, often people do it with kids, but when you have freedom is a great chance to say, hey, let me give it a shot. Why not?